And if you wish, you can smooth out any of the bits of umber that made a rough surface with the sticking of the tracing paper onto uh, the canvas. You just remember it's just a background. You're never really going to look at it, so it's not a big problem. You can always fill in if you want to afterwards. Okay, now what we're going to do now is we're going to outline the champagne glasses. So we, we just get a little bit of white onto your palette knife. I'm using a small palette knife for this because I don't want to get too much white onto the canvas. But truthfully, you can use what you like, but I mean, that's the, the you've got to be a little bit dexterous. So you take it onto there, and you bring it down like so. One. Keep filling your palette knife. Let's get. Try and get the palette knife to have, I'll bring it closer, like so, so that you can see that it's tight onto the palette knife. As you can see then that the actual glasses are being formed. Don't worry about too much precision, not at this moment. You can precise, remove, do precision later if you want to when you actually are nearly finished. But at least you've got where you want to be. So then you've got your glasses performed. Now, we're going to put a bit of burnt, uh, burnt sienna on, which I'll squeeze from the tube. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it gives you... Now, I always use burnt sienna and cadmium orange. I find those are the best two to work together to get what I want for the hands and whatever else. But again, don't forget that I'm only just block, what I call blocking in at the moment. So, burnt sienna and cadmium orange.
just forget that I'm just blocking in, so it's just a, a start. You just try and form the hands. You can make more of these as you wish after, but at least it gives you the opportunity of realising where the hands are going to be, and that gives you what you might call part of the painting. Okay, so then you want to know where the champagne is filled to. Now, on each glass, remember that if fragments say this glass uh, top is like so, then the glass has got the, the champagne within it has to be very similar in in the you can have it where you like it doesn't really matter see this one there you need to do what you might call a little tiny line to follow that glass down through there because that is part of the other and then you've got the set exactly the same with this one coming down through there gently through because remember it's behind that one and this one is the same whoops now as you can see i haven't done that one good so you don't forget, you can rub it out. You rub it out like so. And then you can bring it back in again like that, you see. Now there's always a correction on everything, so therefore you don't have to be perfect at this moment because purely because this is a block in and you're only just putting in if you like what you're going to paint Um, I have noticed when looking back on my video that my Hootera glasses come in from the side now and then. You'll have to excuse that. Uh, I mean, it's just one of those things. Right, now then. We have got to a stage where, as I said, I've got to show you that your line of that there should be the same as the line of the filling of the glass. So they should be in the same vein. And you can correct them as easy as you wish by just putting a little bit more umbra. Don't worry about it messing up. It'll all look good when it's finished anyway. And, you know, wherever you are, that you, you look at it and you think, like Frank said, this glass doesn't look right here. So, you know, what you can do is you can correct that by bringing this out and that out. And just correct it. And then once it's corrected, you can get some umber and you can correct it like so, even then it doesn't look so right. So that, as I say, you, 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 know, you just keep on going until it looks right. If it looks right, I'm going to say to you that it is right. Now then, once you've got that 
And then you you start looking at your other uh, filling and whatever. You can do the hands later. The hands not a problem. I mean, they'll come in later on. I'll just show you a little tiny bit of, of how you do the hands, but I won't do it all. When you put the highlights of the hands in. And this is the thumbs you might appreciate. So you can make the thumb and then you just bring the highlights in and then that's and then the finger which is always a cross because it has to come round the glass like so so you want to try and make it and don't forget that finger must come across the thumb And you can make it, you can widen it then. And, you, you, and this one will come down so that's your, that's your hand coming in there, you see. You make it so the finger is lost around the back of the, the glass, which gives you your length of your finger then. It can be as long as you want. And if you think it's too wide, don't forget, you can put a little bit of umber on the bottom of it and bring it back to where you want it to be. And that just gives you an idea of how the hands are formed. And then a little bit of Indian yellow and white. Whoops, a daisy. And you just And then you put your white underneath that to actually give you what you might call your highlights. Don't forget titanium white is the last one you put on, but that's the white. But anyway, put some white in here, which will be your reflection. For the depth of the glass, you need a little bit more darker to the back, so you want to change your colours so that like so. And then don't and then if you wanted to, you can make that. Reflect and then you have some slight reflection on these.
As I said with the palette knife, anything really goes. If it looks like fingers, then it is fingers. That's the most important part. If you try to make it perfect, it will not work. You've just got to really be lucid and just bang it in. That's all you need to do. That's all it needs. Nothing else. And don't go back. Or if you make a mistake, you can always put it right. Fragment second, I'll just give you an instance here. Look, you know, if you want to close that line down, you just put a little bit more umber there just to close it down, look, you know, so that it's a slightly less glass and and then, then you've got what, what you really need. And then if you want to up this, you can up it by 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 giving it a bit of taste on there and then a line, you know, glasses they get they've got a Reflection. And don't be just be don't be, be bold, but don't be mad with the palette knife. Just just let it go. Just so it looks like a reflection. Anywhere where you want to create more of that reflection, you can put just a little bit more on wherever. Just something like the here will be. And there. And then when you're filling in or whatever, you're just making more of, just really, just. If my hooch is in, I'm sorry. I do apologize. It's quite difficult trying to show you guys how to do it and setting up the camera so that I don't get in the way of it. <laughs> but never mind, I keep on going. Okay, so now it's a, a clean up from now on. Uh, you've got your main lines in, which is the white bits. And what you need to do now is just clean up the little bits and pieces that give you the shape of the glass. So you use umber and you just touch in what you think is going to give you the best results. And glass shape is important because obviously people look at it and they'll think it's a bit odd if it doesn't look the right shape anyway. So, and like with this glass, can you see there, that glass is either behind or in front. Now it shows behind, but it's showing in front there. And you need to be a little bit careful of those things. And so you get a little bit of white and you come down over there, which pushes the glass into the background. Now the main thing is, is that you've got to make it look like champagne. Now one of the things with champagne is it, it's got a bubble, but so you start putting your color in. And uh, what you need to do is just give you a little bit of yellow underneath there where the froth is, if you like, of the champagne. Don't go too mad. Just touch it in like so.
this is the froth of the champagne. Okay. And then you get your white, and the white is obviously the bubbles on top. Now, when you load your brush, make sure you load your brush on the, on, sorry, brush, my goodness, uh, your palette knife, when you load it, load it on the chip end, so that therefore you don't get uh, this piece of, of, of paint on this end so that it, ugly wood, it gets onto your work. So that's loaded. Hopefully you can see that. I'll put it on a black bit so you can actually see it there. And what we do is we give it a little bit of a froth up the top. So do the same with this one. Same with this one. But as you see, that obviously I've not got enough paint onto the palette knife. Just want to, but you don't want too much. That's why I'm always a little bit wary. You never put too much if you can help it. And just let it smear on. So the better it smears, the more not natural it looks. And then in this one needs to do it at the back. And don't forget that it's there's a shadow of it or a reflection of it within here. So that one comes across there and it comes into there. Don't forget that. And don't forget always that that one's on top of it. So it always looks as though that one there is behind. Now then you can add little bits of colour to this because obviously as you might appreciate with a glass it'll pick up all different colours from lights that might be around. So you can put a little bit of colour in here and there. And you might have a little bit there. They all pick up a little bit of colour. Not too much, just enough to give you that feel of reflected light. Now also as well, you've got to think of the line of the glass. So therefore when the colour comes down, you wouldn't just put it straight. You'd have to go with your palette knife to the line of the glass. So that therefore it works like that. And then you can put other ones in. You can put a little bit of viridian in, just a tiny touch. We'll put a bit of uh, white with that actually in just a moment. Just mixing at the moment, so just one moment. Viridian is nice with, when it's lightened with a bit of white. And you can put a little tiny bit of viridian in. And then it's the top of the glasses, which is the most important piece, really. So you come, you can just touch it in, just touch it. Doesn't matter if you go across the other, just touch them in. Again, you only want 
paint on the edge of the palette knife so that you can touch it in. And you can then correct it as you want. Inside of that, you give it a bit of umber to give it a bit of depth inside. This is burnt umber we're using. So just give it some depth in here. And give it a round of the glass. Same goes for here. Whoops, a little bit more on this one because it's a bit the actual when you're mixing the paint I'll I'll do a little video of how to mix paint as well i.e. to make it supple so that it'll do what you want it to do and then you get your Titanium white, don't forget titanium white is very important because this is the whitest white. So you just put a little bit more of that on these. Then with this one, we'll have a central piece of uh, titanium white to give the, the reflection. So I'll have a piece just on that one, which is the bigger one. I'll do that again, actually. And if you don't like that one's going a bit wrong, so you just get a bit of umber and you just touch it so it starts to look where you want it to be, not where it wants to go, if you like, you know. Now, with glass, it's a reflection. Remember that all the bits and pieces you're putting on are reflections. So really and truly, they're all just shapes. Bit, bit there, and a bit there. Give it the ideal feel. Those shapes. Then we want really titanium white down here. This is the whitest white, remember. Whoops, a daisy. It's got some other other painting on that, so we'll take that away. It wants to be as white as white as white, so you can't afford to have any other colour come in. This is to give you the, the reflections. And then 
you just like because these are darker you want a little tiny bit of lighter yellow uh, I, I use Indian yellow myself which gives a really good portray of light and then you put that on top of there so that it but don't forget don't smear it right in make it look as though it's actually is a reflection so we there you you bit more here <coughs> excuse me now with the fingers and thumbs and whatever else we knocked up this um, umber so this was not an apologies this was sienna with cadmium orange cadmium orange don't forget burnt sienna and cadmium orange and what you're after doing now is just forming the fingers so this finger comes round There. And remember, don't forget your. It's not Mr. Perfect, so it can be as you, as it happens. That's the beauty of palette knife up against the brush. What we'll do with this one, just for fun, is we'll give it a bit of nail varnish, so that it might be from a woman. Look. put a little bit more underneath here if necessary but again it's not supposed to be perfect remember so if it's perfect you'll you're missing the point it's an illusion This is your your highlights. Okay, and then you can shape that one by a little bit of umber on there because you put too much, so you just shape it round like so. And then up there, obviously, as you might appreciate, you want as much light as possible in this piece. So now we're we're going to put the fingers and the thumb whoops Highlight for the nail varnish. Oops. You can shape those if you want to because you go across with them. 
like so. But it is not perfect, remember. Excuse my dog out there, if you can hear him, or her, sorry. Gets on my nerves at times as well. <laughs> Don't we get a bit more cadmium orange? It's always good to have it, you know, it's... Uh, The shape of the thumb <clears throat> is quite important because shapes give you the enjoyment of a, of a painting like this thumb is not very good so you want it to be just like so so that it looks like it's resting on the glass and as you see it just gives it that just in more enjoyable look when you do it Shape of the hand goes in there a little bit more. Again, it's not going to be perfect. It's what your eyes see. But you, a lot of people just look and they don't really, they don't pick fault in all of the bits and pieces you, you do anyway. In that they just look at the overall painting. We get these, and these are like your reflections. So you want one on there, like so, and this. Just make it look as though it's reflecting. Same with that one. It's only about fun, this. And that looks a bit what I would call a bit hard for a reflection. So you get your umber again. And 
just touch it in. Now we're at the back, we'll get rid of a little bit more of the, the white, make it look more within the glass, and a little bit more umber. You can titivate and play around with it forever, so it's not a big problem. You can keep looking at everything you do. Remember, I'm doing this one quick, so, you know, when it's dry, maybe I'll do something different, but at least it's given you the idea of what you can do with a palette knife. So, what's happening here? We can put more colours in, it doesn't make a lot of difference what colour you put in. You can even put a bit of the old cadmium orange in, just to really say, okay, what's your problem? And we'll put a little bit of that, actually, on the edge of the champagne. Now, there is a, the article, and you can leave that to dry, and then what you do is you touch it up afterwards. But at least it gives you the opportunity of seeing the article as it stands. Um, and then down here, you, I can... Get my little monogram. <clears throat> now don't forget that's not necessarily finished you can do as you wish with it you can make it more the problem you've got with the palette knife or even painting is you never know when to stop and and the idea really is is that you produce the painting um, you can always produce another one and when you do the next one you can alter that to whatever you wish but the main thing is that you you, you um you produce a painting and and uh, that's the most important part of it really in like like up here you can touch these in see we need a little bit more reflective shine here
bit more viridian in there because we've got let's see you know we can put that in like so a little bit more here just really to and, and if it looks too much just run it across you run your palette knife across it Now you can stand back at that as you wish and you can look at that and then what you can do is you can do little things, titivate it if you like, you know, you can see just here, see those bits there, you can touch those in so it looks a lot more around the edge of the glass, giving the glass a better appearance. And you can put more white in here when it's dry. And then what we've got is down here. We've got one here. These are just added bits. You can change them if you want. Like, I mean, that one does look like it's in line with there. So what you do is you change that. You put, you take that across a bit more. Just keep your eyes on it so that it looks more in keeping with what you're trying to achieve. Like that will be the line down. So he will be there somewhere, wouldn't he? And then you can anything goes, remember that. It'll stop now and uh, we'll touch it up and I'll just show you how to mix the paint in the next video.